It was uh, after I had been doing like some open mics during freshman year of college and um, <laughs> getting served in um, MC battles in um, college parties because that would happen. Like you go to the college parties and then every now and then like they throw on some beats and, and the heads would just battle like right there in the spot. And, and like it, it was battles were everywhere. It, it wasn't a stage thing. It wasn't organized. Like you were always prepared to be called out or to call somebody else out. And I was brash and I just started rhyming. Of course, I thought I was the best. And I would go into other people's schools and call them out. And you don't do that because it's their school for one, right? And they could be the worst rapper ever, but they're going to get love because it's in their school. Um, so you got to find a way to dismantle them. And if you can't do that, you are not winning on their ground. But of course, I thought I could do that. Um, and so after getting served a lot there, but learning and then coming back and then holding service, right? Um, that's where you start getting the respect. And that's where my man was like, I got to connect you to my boy Cassius Clay Mac. He's got a little in-home studio. And um, that's when I started working with a beat maker from the Bronx. Uh, Cass Cassius Clay Mac actually went on to, to then produce uh, a track on Biggie's second album. Um, uh, the 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 I think it's niggas bleed or niggas um, one or the other, um, but he produced that track on that on that album. Eventually, that's what he went on to do. Um, but he was like a hungry young beat maker. He had a little four track recorder in his basement, um, little sure mic connected to it, and he was just looking for an MC to work with. But he was really into music theory. Right. And 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 he he picked up on the formula, and 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 he's a true Bronx native, and and being the birthplace, like he he was keyed in, so he was like, here's how you lock it in, and he had me writing the 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 eight bar intros, sixteen bars, eight bar hooks, sixteen bars, eight bar hooks, maybe four bar bridge, sixteen bar, bring it out. Um, he gave me such strict guidelines for the way that I was putting songs together back then um that it, it it really helped me you know develop as an artist plus we were trying to get the best quality we could out Hold of the four track i saw a facebook post recently that said there were no bridges in hip-hop are there bridges in hip-hop yeah there is what, who said that i don't remember i sincerely don't remember what? What like Wait, bridges? Like yeah, yeah, like this, like a um, musical bridge. Book. Like so I saw somebody say that in a. Fa I don't remember who said it. I'm not gonna lie. I saw it on Facebook, yeah, no. and I was like, "Hold up, Breeze is talking about like back in the day times, and specifically used the term bridge." And I'm like, "I know what a bridge is, and I believe there were bridges, but I stayed out of that because I'm trying not to argue on Facebook and waste time. Right? Like it's not worth it." Yeah. But I saw that and it popped out at me, and I'm a little bit going, "Wait." There are bridges, right? He just said that. Yes. Okay, so I, no, absolutely. I just wanted to dead that because I think Breeze Ella Flowing knows a lot more about original hip hop than a lot of us do. Yes, yes. No, absolutely. There are absolutely bridges in hip hop. That's not a le legit I I use them. I am not the the I'm not the guy that invented using bridges in hip hop. Right. Like no, it's not. it's been there since Always, yeah. pretty much, I'd imagine. Like, and, uh, and, and it comes in a, a lot of different forms, right? Like the the scratch break right before that last verse is essentially the bridge. It, it takes you over there, right? Um, so it, it, it's you're, you're formatting it that way, and then it opens up that four or that eight. Normally, a four if you want a, a, a quick transition for something different. Um, but you just want to change it up, even if it's just like stretch out the beat and extend it a little bit and hit that. Dang, dang. Dan, Dan, and then like drop it again. Um, it, there, there's all sorts of little little right places to put those things that um, that 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 are universally formatted to be appealing when people listen to them because the way that people condition to listen to music from the Motown era coming out of that. Um, and so oh, that's the, huge. The best hip hop was basically formatted around that same kind of formula. And a lot of those old Juice Crew jams were formatted in a similar fashion. Yo, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. This is actually big. Do you guys hear what he's saying? Because we're talking about like original hip hop. is effectively, and we're saying the stuff that did well, we'll call it, stuff that maybe people love today. 
effectively took successful popular music of another genre, formatted and structured it in a way that would be appealing to list appealing to listeners and use that magic to create appealing sounds, ignoring perhaps a little bit personal ego and how they feel like things should be in order to make sure that there's more accessibility within their music. And that's an idea that stems from the eighties and stuff. Yeah. It's the tail end, right? It's when, it's when the tighten up started happening. It's when um, you started seeing a little more crossover success and the, and the, the songs that were achieving that, were the ones that were fit in the format. Now, the, now some of the best songs, like you know, you, you think about my melody, and and when that dropped, and like, and those weren't sixteens. Like Rob was just going until he was done, until he felt done, until it felt like it was done. And that's that's the essence that 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 we picked up on, and we were like, that's that dude right there, right? Um, as a, as a fifteen year old on the bus going out to uh, you know one of them summer camp trips or something like that, um, you know like like he, there was nothing like that, but then the crossover success came in the format, and then when they started doing the format, that's when the video started. They started investing in the videos. So most of the early videos that you see for a lot of these rappers, you you'll hear the formatting in those videos. But um, you know they they didn't make they didn't make the video for my melody when that came out. It was just rocking on the radio and it was it was moving that vinyl. Um, but that that was an amazing jam. I think it would it was better than some of the the more formatted songs that came out later. You know. No, but like I agree with you. And it like, so here's what happens. Sometimes we have these conversations in our twenty twenty something perspectives, right? Where what's good, what's bad, what's proper because we see people make choices that are effectively pop marketing moves and perhaps they work better, but it's not as maybe appealing as say the sonic soundscape of a great brave underground track, like a Rakim would have been right. Like that shit's yeah. fucking fire. It really is. But like, I'm sure there were a lot of people that also tried to do it. Rakim did in some way that nobody's heard of to this day. And Rakim happened to be like the one that did it right. And everyone else ended up going maybe here or there and making some choices along the way because there's business attached to it. So I think there's yep. this weird rose-colored view that all the people of the golden era, as we put it, were just like completely never willing to make pop choices. And I feel like that was never true, but it's kind of hard to like describe that to people who don't know a lot about it. But you're just like, yeah they did that and like we fucked with rakim and yo looking back everyone knows that one more than say a lot of the other ones but you need more than just the rakim to push an industry yes mm -hmm.